How's it, how's it? Today we're gonna to look at three amazing photographers whose surnames start with the letter B. And we're gonna look at David Bailey, and I haven't got the cover here, but we're gonna look at some of this great photography. Now you may be familiar with David Bailey, but uh, if you're not, this is some work that goes beyond probably what you're familiar with. We're also gonna look at Larry Burroughs. Larry Burroughs, yes, he's one of my favorite photojournalists, and he's best known for the work that he did in, uh, in Vietnam, which is quite <laughs> self-evident here and the last guy is um, continuing somewhat with the war theme although he's not a war photographer certainly not a documentary photographer but that is Cecil Beaton and it happens to be this book which is um, taken during the war period um, you know sort of second world war but he's most well known for being a society photographer here in the UK and I think these days probably if you are familiar with his work it's through the Netflix series The Crown which he features in quite a lot. So the first guy we're going to look at is David Bailey and I can't believe that it's taken so long to look at his photography because I'm a big fan of his work and, and I feel that there seems to be some sort of odd thing that outside of the UK he's possibly not that well known. So hopefully uh, this look, this quick look at this book is going to help to rectify that a little bit. David Bailey's probably best known for his fashion photography and, and all that stuff that he was doing in the 60s where he was revolutionizing with a couple of other photographers. Basically, the whole British landscape of, of, of kind of, you know, was, was, was some mainstream photography, if you want to call it that. However, I've chosen this book, A, because it was the first book of, of Bailey's that I ever bought, but I think it also gives a good insight to him as a, as a photographer rather than a society figure. And one of the things, certainly as a young photographer, that I really enjoyed about this is that this book is chock full of juxtapositions. That's when two images work side by side. And you can look at this. We've got this uh, portrait, the family portrait, and I'm going to say it's Lawrence Olivia. Um, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. And you know, it's just great with all the heads here. And then these flying helmets. Now the, the, the connections are not always obvious, but that is kind of the point about juxtaposition, is that you combine the two and it makes us, as the viewer, see a different story. So that's a really lovely kind of example of, of what is sort of shot through in this book. This is another fantastic example, because we have <laughs> Pete Townsend on the right here looking all very bedraggled, and then uh, what looks like you know, a bird... Um, skeleton. So you can almost say like he's, he's like a dinosaur because it's reminiscent of one of those dinosaurs that you see in, a, you know, in, in a museum. And this is kind of the photography that I was first introduced to with, with Bailey. This very sort of stark, square, white background, high key kind of thing. Which at the time I was like, wow, this is really amazing. Uh, but of course, you know, you see it a lot in so the Aberdeen, which you know he he did it sort of years before, what have you. But it just it made me feel like this is kind of the photography. This is how proper in inverted commas photography should look. I am a sucker, an absolute sucker for a lovely toned black and white print that has a, a lovely sort of tonal range. And these are kind of the prints, these two images here specifically, because they're very contrasty in so much, not sort of the, um, the, the prints themselves, but the tones within, the tones are very nicely defined. And, and it kind of summed up sort of two things for me as a, as a young photographer. First of all, there was the, 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 the very black sky that's here. That's obviously because of a red filter on the, the black and white film. So that was kind of one of the things, because I just recently learned how to do that. So I was feeling chuffed with myself that I knew how to make a, a black sky. But then also you have this kind of really quirky, odd, I don't know what even you'd call it. I'm going to guess that this is um, uh, probably his wife at the time, maybe a baby or whoever. But it doesn't matter. It's a very unusual looking image, which intrigued me as, as a young photographer because it was about creating a world. Planted in my mind the idea that photography is theatre. As a young photographer, I just assumed that all great photography just sprung, fully formed, from the eyes and the, the, the lenses of the great photographers and that, that they how somehow had an ability to just pluck from the ether amazing images. And of course, that's not the case at all, that they all draw inspiration from other photographers who have gone before the photographers are working at the same time. And this photograph is a, a case in point. I see a lot of Bill Brandt, for example, in this image. And it's just a reminder to us that even though somebody else has done something, we shouldn't be afraid to take that as inspiration, to change it and kind of 
see how we can interpret that feel. It's odd when you go back through older photographers or photographers who you knew when you were younger and you see influences that have leached into your own photography without you being necessarily aware of, of where they came from. And this photograph here on the right is, is so indicative of that, that I love photographing urban landscapes in this kind of fashion, but it was never a conscious decision to do that. And I wonder if in some small way this photograph has influenced me and, and, and shaped the way that I see the world. It's worth bearing in mind, and I can't quite figure out the relationship between Sting here and this uh, mannequin, Valentino, on the right-hand side. There must be something, but that's the joy of juxtaposition, that it is open to our own interpretation. And sometimes it, is just, it does leave, certainly me, scratching my head going like, what? <laughs> What's going on? I mentioned earlier, obviously, that Cecil Beaton is, these days, with, within the general public, probably most well-known for his portrayal in the Netflix series The Crown, where he plays the society photographer. Well, not that he's, somebody plays him, and he was a society photographer. But during the Second World War, he was employed by the Ministry of Information to, to document the, the, you know, the effects of the war on, on the UK. And he traveled to India and Burma and places like that. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this particular book. I think this is a great introduction to his photography because it, I find it interesting that he brings into what is sort of gritty, real social commentary sort of, uh, photography, all the aesthetics that he is also known for in his society photography. So if you're looking for, for two things that are completely uh, juxtaposed, this is a fantastic book and I can't wait to jump into it with you. Cecil Beaton, society photographer. That's kind of what most people will think of when the name Cecil Beaton comes up. But he was asked, you know, in, in the war years to document the world, uh, or the UK and the, and the effects of, of the war for the Ministry of Information. And this photograph here that we start off with is, and had apparently a massive impact on America's perception of the war in Europe. That, you know, all of a sudden it's humanized. There was another photograph in this book that leaped out at me the second I saw it. And, and I had shame on me for not paging through this book properly earlier. One of the, the, the drawbacks, I think, of being a, 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 a addicted to books is you don't always go through them properly. And, uh, and this, I should have, because this, is the, this photograph here is the very first photograph that I was ever shown in my visual communication course at photo school. And I don't, I don't know who photographed it, but now, now I do. It is Cecil Beaton, and I'm trying to think about why they showed it, and it's completely obvious. It's because it's an idea in framing and how we structure a photograph to show things. You know, we have the, the, the um, it says the chief of police, yes. So the chief of police is here in front of his men, and they are sort of encapsulated in this wonderful circle here. And they are, I think, and, uh, you know, they are put there, on purpose, they're specifically arranged like this because you have what could just be a very mundane headshot of you know, policemen crafted and put together in a style that makes them look stylish. And that's the beauty of Cecil Beans. All of these photographs have a style and a beauty to them. Queen Elizabeth um, on the right hand side. Um, that she is sitting there and it is glamorous and it is everything that beaten is known for and then we look at some of the other photography that comes through and this is i can't you can't get further from that than this this bombed out says st paul's look at this photograph so this is it says clearing fallen debris from the roof of uh, st mary lebeau in cheapside and it says the church designed by sir christopher and was completely destroyed a few days later this is a photograph that is absolutely beautiful. The lighting on it is, is fantastic. And also as a social record, that it has, you, you could have just gone in there and taken some pictures of, you know, of men with a wheelbarrow, but he's taken time to document the building and the people and the places. So we have context. When I was flicking through this book, uh, you know, researching for this video, 
uh, I had to show my wife this because I was like, you know, this this is so typical, I think, of of a certain kind of British person in the 1940s and stuff. And, and Cecil Beaton was certainly, you know, in, in that mold of, of a society person. You know, that here he is in India at the um, at the Viceroy's house, uh, which he'd been posted in 1944. So the war is still on. But it's like, you know, he goes up to, to it says here, Lady Wevel, who was the, the, the vice scenery, vice scenery, I don't know. And well, you can almost imagine the conversation. Well, well, darling, you know, we simply must have a picture of you in this divine dress on this grand staircase, you know, sort of thing. And it's like, but dude, you're here to, to photograph the war effort. And, and I love it. Sometimes, you know, it says like you can take the man out of the thing, but the thing can't, you know, <laughs> it's like this, I think, just sums everything up. And you compare that with the photograph of the young lady, uh, you know, the girl with the bandage on the head at the beginning. It's like, wow, you know, just sometimes you just, there is the nature of the beast and you just have to go with it. I have covered Larry Burroughs here on the channel before. So that's kind of, if you want more in depth about him, that go and look at that. I'll link it in the video for you below. But looking at this book, it gives us an insight into how war photography or, or conflict photography is much more than just taking pictures of people, well, essentially shooting each other. This is the book Larry Burroughs' Vietnam, which if you are able to get a copy of it, I would certainly recommend because it is a fantastic book. And I will link, as always, to all the books in the description below. All right, if, this, if the pages flick around a little bit, I'm gonna have, because I'm this book's got slightly shiny sheen to the pages, so I'm holding the left hand page down with my fingers, so this sort of thing. Anyway, we're talking about Vietnam. We're talking about Larry Burroughs, and, and Vietnam is, I, I think it's fair to say, you know, it has been documented a lot. So it is welded into the, published, the public consciousness, irrespective of, of what nationality you are. There are, if you close your eyes and think of Vietnam, there are certain images and looks and feels of images that are spring to mind. And I, I'm going to make a statement and say that Larry Burroughs was instrumental in putting those feels and looks in there. And these two photographs here, absolutely, I think, are a great starting point because he uses framing a lot. So that you can see the, the, the door of, of the chopper here. This is, you know, sort of showing us through. And that puts us in the place. It makes us feel like we are in the moment as opposed to just kind of, uh, you know, somebody looking at a photograph. This particular image is also indicative of this kind of feeling like we are there in in the, the place that's happening. And and I don't know if this is true or not. I'm, I'm gonna like to think of it, but apparently Larry Burroughs would make pilots fly in a certain way and, and a formation to get a better photograph, a better composition. Now, <laughs> anybody who's had experience in the Air Force during Vietnam, tell me if that was something that could actually have happened. I'd be, I'd be dying to know. Larry Burroughs spent time with the people he was photographing. And we will look at some of the images in a second that really illustrate that. But that's the point of why I think when you look at his photographs, we feel that we are connected with his people somehow because they are behaving completely naturally around him. And this particular photo story, which I think is one of the greatest photo stories uh, that certainly I've ever seen, Yankee Papa 13, is a case in point in it. It follows the exploits of this young man who in the, the course of his day, you know, was doing all the bits and the bobs that are part of, you know, just being a soldier, being a, you know, being part of this, this chopper battalion crew. I don't know what the, the term would be. And Larry is, is photographing all of the stuff that goes on and, and this particular image as well. It's a shame that it's on a gatefold um, because it's a really great photograph. But the camera's actually out on a boom, so you can't really see it here. But if you go watch the, the Larry Burroughs video that I'll link to below, you can see this. So the camera's kind of out here somewhere <laughs> outside the, the helicopter. And, you know, he's there doing all the photographs and they get into a firefight. And again, the full story is on the, um, the, the video that I do with Larry Burroughs. And it just, it's the way that the whole thing, it goes through and is, is told, it makes us feel like we are part of the whole thing. And, and, and we really feel gut-wrenched that when this photograph, and this is one of those famous photographs of, 
you know, of Vietnam really hits us in, in the gut when we look at it. And, and I'm going to have to flick through because I think YouTube might get a bit fidgety about some of these things. But we see the anguish in this, this gentleman's face. You know, if you contrast that with, with the way that he looked earlier, and I'm sorry, this is a bit, you know, I shouldn't be flicking through this, like, but whatever, you know. This is the man. He started off like this, and then that. That's what good, great photography can do. As always, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to explore other photographers whom you may not have heard of from this series, I'm going to link to them over here. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.